What, what's your advice to those entrepreneurs anywhere in the world? There's, there are people who are listening to this right now going, oh, I've got this great idea, but they can't, they just can't take the first step. What's your advice to those folks? Cause uh, you, you know, these people. Yeah. Um, my advice honestly is to just do it literally not to paraphrase Nike or anything, uh, but to <laughs> just, just do it. Just get out there and do it. I remember um, before we launched Lock and Stock, you know, I got the idea for Lock and Stock in my final semester of university. And now I, I'd find myself sitting in classrooms and just sketching out designs for the application. The original application, it looked terrible, honestly, compared to what it looked like later on. The first version, like V1, when we first went live on the App Store and the Play Store, it looked like shit. It looked horrible. <laughs> um, and that was something that I had designed on PowerPoint, literally. But I did it because I was like, okay, fine. This is what I see in my head. This is I'm the tool gonna... I know how to use. This is what I'm comfortable with. Yeah. I, I got to get my ideas down. Exactly. Exactly. Like, like this is what, like, I, this is what I'm imagining in my head. This is how I'm going to visualize it. Now I got to find someone who can build it for me. Okay, fine. Found that person. Let's get to work. But at the end of the day, you just got to get started. Um, that's the hardest part. I think like most ideas die as they are ideas literally no one ever does anything about them there's this quote from jeff bezos that i actually like and it's something that drove me a lot in the beginning um you know jeff bezos and i'm not sure if you know the story of like you know amazon's formative years but bezos basically was 30 something he had a wife he had a kid or two kids i think and he had a cushy software engineering job um, at an investment bank on wall street and he quit that and he moved across the country from New York to Seattle and bought a house and moved his family there, took the, took the kids out of school, moved his family there, whatever. And he launched Amazon from his garage. And today Amazon is what it is. But at that time, it was an incredibly risky move. I mean, you quit a very nice job. You took your wife, you took your kids. He had no savings as well. I think you read the early story of Amazon. He had to borrow $300,000 from his dad to launch Amazon. Um, but... A couple of years later, an interviewer asked Jeff Bezos, you know, why did you do this? Like, this is crazy. Why did you do this? Uh, you had an idea for sure, but it's, it's so risky. And, you know, how, like, what made you do it? And Bezos said something in 1995 or 1996 or whatever, but something that I really like and something that I think every single entrepreneur should always remember. He said, my biggest uh, fear in life is, you know, not death, or bankruptcy, or taxes, or anything. My biggest fear in life is regret, having regrets. My biggest driver in life is regret minimization. He said, I don't want to wake up when I'm 50 years old, or 55, or 56, or 57, and think to myself, damn, I should have done that. Or shit, I wish I had done that. I never want to have that. I never want to wake up with those regrets. So I'm just going to do it. And... This resonated with me a lot in our early years, in 2017, in 2018, um, and really kept me going. Just regret minimization. Mm. Whether, whether it works or not, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. But you don't have any regrets either. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any regrets either. Exactly. I don't have a crystal ball. But at that point in time, with Lock and Stock, we were trying to build... The, we were trying to build a platform that could help 50 million people around the world live healthier, more productive lives. That was awesome. Then we pivoted that to Secure My Scholarship, where we're trying to help disperse $100 million in scholarships to people from the middle class and the working class. That's, that's amazing. Whether it works or it doesn't work, I have no idea. But I'm so happy and I'm so excited that we are doing what we're doing. And I wake up every day in the morning excited to do the things that we're going to do. And that's it. Wait, that's wait, life. It's, it's not a better way to be. Exactly. That's life. Um, I mean, uh, as one, of the, one of the cons with startups is, okay, fine, you know, maybe you got to pay yourself less or this or that, or you got to work 24-7, you got to hustle, whatever. But I'm okay with that. Hey, it's it's your thing. It's, it's your thing. It's my thing. It's my thing, exactly, because I love what I do. And so if you're a startup founder, you know, if you want to start up, if you want to launch a startup, if you want to be an entrepreneur, um, I'd say... Find something you love doing as well, like, because it gets difficult. I'm not going to lie. Um, the initial excitement and euphoria lasts for about two or three months, maybe five months, maybe six months, whatever. But once you're done with that, after the first six months are over, 
then reality begins to set in and things get super difficult, <laughs> super fast. And yeah. the walls seem to close in around you. Well, and at this point you got 25 people that, you know, you've got to put shoes on their feet, food in their fridges. This, this has to work because it's not just you and a small group of people around a table. Okay. Yeah. We can go get a job at something. You, you got 25 people dispersed around the world. 25 people with families, yeah. with husbands or wives yeah. or kids. They got bills to pay 100%. And well, I am responsible some days, for some all Some days this. you got to wake up in the middle of the night. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> more, <laughs> more often than you may think. 